Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone to our today's program by Exis Dental School. I would like to welcome everyone from home and abroad. As we all know, Accidental School is known as an international platform right now, as it is the largest online platform for medical students. I would like to thank you, Exis, for arranging this amazing program today. And I would like to welcome all of our judges and participants. As we all know that Exis has given us immense opportunities through access we get the opportunity to get classes from teachers all over the country which is a big thing to have we have mentors from different colleges and the scholar ones so thank you so much access we also get the opportunity to, sh to share our notes day to do notes and day to do informations which help us medical students to grow every day so I would like to welcome everyone to today's mm -hmm. our program, the paper presentation competition by Exis Dental School, which is first time in Bangladesh, I must mention. So firstly, I would love to introduce our judges. Our honorable judges are Dr. Onupam Poddar, sir, associate professor and head, Department of Periodontology and Oral Pathology. Dhaka Dental College and Hospital. Dhaka Dental College and Hospital, Dr. Our foreign, uh, our foreign judges are Dr. Malika Shethi Rishi Ma'am, MDS, FICD, FAOI, FAIOI, MLD Vienna, Periodontology and Laser Specialist, Visiting Professor Periodontology, University how me Cantillon University, Spain, Dr. Bennett Fernandez, sir, PDS MDS Fellowship in Laser Dentistry, Associate Fellowship in Laser Dentistry, Faculty of Dentistry. I would like to welcome Dr. Wahid Zaman, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Periodontology and Oral Pathology, Ganoshastha Shamaj Bhittik Medical College, Dental Unit, Shavhat Dhata. Assalamu alaikum, Onupam Poddar, sir. Welcome, sir. Would you please share some of your kind words for our today's participants? Uh, thank you, today's moderator, Saima Samin Jahan Mohoto. It, it may be your second uh, moderation in accidental digital platform in paper presentation competition program. You are a student of third year, third phase student, 2017 and 2018 in Dental College. Is not it? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello, Morto. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are, you are a student of Sapporo Dental College, third phase student. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. Uh, welcome our today's judges. First of all, I would like to thank very known, well-known periodontist, our friend, Bangladeshi friend, Professor Dr. Mullika Sethi, MBS, FICD, APY, APIOI, MLD Vienna, periodontist and laser specialist, visiting Professor of Periodontology, Catalan University of Spain. And also thanks our judges, Dr. Bennett Fanonen, BDS MBS, Fellowship in Laser Dentistry, Faculty of Dentistry, State University, Malaysia. Also, I would like to thank our uh, country judges, Dr. Wahid Zaman, he is an assistant professor and head department of Pathology and Oral Pathology, Consultation Samaj Bhutti Medical Dental Unit. I would like to thank our uh, beloved student, beloved presenter, Dr. Jenia Rai is a student of CB Dental College and uh, in best 2015 and 2016. Uh, and Tanziva Norin Konso is Holy Family Rectus in Medical Dental Unit, best 2017 and 2018. And Troy Gushami, 
comes from uh, Sir Sadhguru Medical College, Dental Unit, class 2017 and 18. And today's topic is Surgical Periodontal Periodontal Procedure. And group name is Michigan. And it is our 14th episode. And uh, <coughs> finally, uh, I would like to thank the Exit Dental School platform who represents this type of program from last two months. And hopefully, uh, it is going on successfully and it is um, very much popular in our country. It is, uh, <clears throat> in our country. So, uh, I hope in future they will be uh, arranged tremendous emerging program in our periodontology subject and would like to um, change the idea of periodontology. And uh, I um, hope uh, in, um, and um, Dr. Farad and Dr. Uh, Kapo uh, and, and uh, Lunki is also uh, try to um, attend this type of arrange this type of program and and hopefully they will do better and I I would um, like uh, I would like to thank all of you who, who are um, incorporated and this this program in X platform. Thank you. More so. Thank you so much, Anupam Pradhar, sir. As sir said, today's our topic is very interesting which is surgical periodontal procedure. So I would love to request Professor Malika Shethi Rishi, ma'am, to say something about our today's episode and anything about this topic. Well, uh, first of all, it is indeed a matter of great proud. Like I'm really uh, honored and privileged uh, to be one of the invited uh, judges uh, for this paper presentation competition being organized by Access Dental School, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, as I was just talking to Dr. Anupam, I was recollecting uh, that I was there one and a half years back in the capital city of uh, Bangladesh, that is Dhaka. And uh, the fond memories of Bangladesh shall ever remain etched in my mind, in my mind for years to come. So that is very difficult to delete from my mind. And I'm really touched by the wonderful hospitality of uh, all of you when I was there one and a half years back. Uh, at the very outset, I would like to thank, first of all, um, Dr. Faradul Islam, President, Access Dental School, Dr. Anupam Podar, advisor for this paper presentation competition, Dr. Sayadul Islam, Sayyad co-founder and CEO of Access Dental, uh, Access Medical School for giving me this opportunity to be here today on this uh, virtual platform. And I'm also very fortunate to share this platform with Dr. Bennett Fernandez and Dr. Wahid Zaman. Uh, well, uh, as a periodontist, we all know that gingival and periodontal disease exist in various forms and it has afflicted humans like uh, uh, since the dawn of history, I would say. And there are various procedures like various non-surgical as well as surgical procedures which are there for treating periodontal disease. So it's a very good topic, a very interesting topic and uh, my best wishes to uh, the three of you like uh, for this paper presentation competition and uh, uh, it's a very good initiative, I must acknowledge. It's a very good initiative uh, by uh, Access Dental School for organizing this event. So all the best, my best wishes with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your words of wisdom. As we have heard that periodontology is the heart of dentistry. So thank you so much again, Access Dental <coughs> School, and Anupam Pudar, sir, the advisor of our today's competition for organizing all of this. So as we go with the episode 14, I would like to hear from Dr. Ben Fernando, sir. I would like to request you to please share some of your words with us. Okay, so I would say uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is, uh, I bring warm greetings from Malaysia. Uh, though I'm basically from uh, India, uh, 
uh, currently it's a uh, good morning for me here in malaysia and uh, this is my second opportunity to be uh, associated uh, with the bangladesh periodontal society and i can see that it is growing and uh, this is my first uh, experience with access dental school uh, but i can see the wonderful uh, work because i keep following on facebook and uh, this is the 14th episode of that so i can see that there is a lot of encouragement which is the need of the hour especially with the link of periodontitis and the systemic diseases and the topic uh, chosen today is a really fantastic topic on the surgical procedures which also everybody needs to do on a day to day basis many a time because of the fact that we are also placing implants so the third dentition as we call the implants so has also the necessity to maintain these uh, periodontal tissues around it so that is why this topic is very much <clears throat> important and i thank uh, my uh, dr uh, anupam podar sir for giving me this opportunity to be there and also sharing the platform with the fantastic uh, co-judge uh, uh, professor malika sethi and also professor i mean dr bai drahma so it is really fantastic to be uh, sharing this dais and uh, listening to these undergraduates and motivating them and to see how nicely they are picking up on the periodontal curriculum thank you thank you so much sir for your words we are really fortunate to have you here with us so i would like to request dr wahid zaman sir to, to please say something for us and encourage our participants for today's competition thank you thank you everyone i am dr wahid zaman this is uh, i think this is the very effective and good platform to rise here yourself and also i'm uh, feel very proud and thanks to my dear sir dr anupam podda sir Uh, for choosing me as a judge in this event and i think this is the very more very most important topic is discussed here so i feel very uh, uh, better and also in case the, the always the students uh, that always have a faith in your ability uh, seen uh, so will uh, will come your way eventually best of luck thank you thank you so much sir for your words so as we start our today's competition so competition means rules so rules are mandatory here so let's hear about the rules the rules are very simple each participant will get 10 minutes to show their presentations after 8 minutes i will give a little reminder that you have 2 minutes to go for your further presentation so time is strict and i hope all our participants are ready i would like to again welcome all the audience that are with us so please join and let's enjoy today's competition so i would like to start with our <clears throat> first participant who is dr jinia rai session 2015 16 college city dental college and hospital so i am audible Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. So I'm going to share my screen. Actually, I'm yes. in hostel, so there may be some disturbances. But before end, I would like to apologize for that. Um, uh, is my screen being shared? Yes. Thank you. So welcome everyone. Assalamu alaikum uh, to our judges and my fellow participants and uh, our moderator. Uh, I am Jania Rai from City Dental College and Hospital, and I I feel very lucky and grateful to be a part of uh, of this uh, paper presentation on the topic surgical periodontal procedure. And I would like to thank our organizer, Access Dental School, for that. The topic is. a uh, surgical periodontal procedure and with no further delay i would like to start it first the content we have the introduction 
purpose of the periodontal surgery, objectives of the surgical phase, periodontal surgery, indications of periodontal surgery, general principles of periodontal surgery, and incisions of periodontal surgery. I will be covering these topics. So the introduction is, periodontal therapy is directed at disease prevention, slowing or arresting disease progression, regenerating lost periodontium, and maintaining achieved therapeutic objectives Surgical periodontal procedure is indicated when non-surgical methods fail. Let's go to purpose. One is controlling or eliminating periodontal diseases. Second is correcting anatomic conditions that may favor periodontal diseases, impair aesthetics, or impede placement of the correct prosthetic appliances. Third is placing implants to replace lost teeth and improving the environment for their placement and function. Now the objectives. One is improvement of the prognosis of teeth and the replacements. Second, improvement of aesthetics. Third, cor co um, correction of anatomic morphologic defects that may favor plaque accumulation and pocket recurrence or impaired aesthetics. So what is periodontal surgery? Surgical periodontal therapy is the recontouring of gum and bone to decrease the risk of further periodontal disease surgically. So surgical procedures are designed to either remove diseased gum and bone for better cleaning access or to build uh, missing tissue back to a healthier state. So the different types of periodontal surgery are the pocket reduction surgery. And under this, there are the resective, uh, gingivectomy, epically displaced flap, and undisplaced flap with or without osseous resection. This picture depicts it. Second, there is regenerative flaps with grafts, membranes, uh, these are the pictures. And uh, the next is co correction of anatomic or morphologic defects. Under this, we have plastic surgery techniques that widens the attached gingiva, free gingival grafts, and other techniques, etc. And next is aesthetic surgery that uh, includes root coverage, recreation of gingival papilla. Mm -hmm. next is pre prosthetic techniques, which includes the crown lengthening and wrist augmentation and vestibular deepening. The next is placement of dental implants, including techniques for site development for implants, guided bone regeneration, sinus grafts. The indications of periodontal surgery. It is usually done if uh, non-surgical uh, procedures are failing. So the cases are areas with irregular bony contours, deep craters, and other defects. Second is impaired access for scaling and group planning. Third, in cases of percussion involvement of grade two or grade three. And fourth is any necessary root section or hemisection. The fifth is intra-bony pockets and distal areas frequently complicated by mucogenesis problems. Six, persistent inflammation in areas with moderate to deep pockets and sallow pockets or normal sulci. So the general principles of periodontal surgery. All surgical procedures should be carefully planned. The patient should be adequately prepared medically, psychologically, and practically for all aspects of the intervention. So for outpatient surgery, we have to look on these topics, that is patient preparation, intraoperative considerations, and post-surgical instruction. Under patient preparation, there should be re-evaluation re after phase one therapy. That is, it consists of reprobing and re-examining all the pertinent findings. Then pre-medication, antibiotics are used post-operatively so that the complications of pain and swelling are reduced. It can also be given as prophylaxis. The th uh, next is smoking. Smoking should be avoided for a minimum of three to four weeks after the procedure. That is, it has deleterious effect. And Next is informed consent. It is the foremost thing to be done as uh, patients should be informed about the diagnosis, prognosis, the different possible treatments with the expected results, all pros and cons verbally and in writing. Next, we have to control the infection. So universal precautions, including protective attire and barrier techniques are strongly recommended. Uh, then sedation and anesthesia, Regional block and local infiltration injection are given as anesthesia and presedation 
uh, benzodiazepine agents like alprazolam, diazepam, and lorazepam are given. And least invasive method to cure anxiety in dental office is nitrous oxide and oxygen. The emergency equipment should be uh, should be put ready, uh, and the operator, all assistants, and office personnel should be trained to handle all the possible emergencies that may arise. Under intraoperative cons considerations, the, there should be tissue management. Uh, there should be scaling and root planning before surgical procedures. Uh, scaling and root planning is must. Then vascular supply and hydration. As uh, the flaps should be vascularized uh, and should not be should be hydrated, we have to uh, be careful on that. Next is hemorrhage control and avoiding dead space. Uh, a uh, large blood clot will create a dead space, which is not good for a surgery. So we have to avoid that. And wound closure. And lastly, periodontal dressings are given so that uh, healing, uh, there will be protection of the injury and there will be proper healing. Now instructions for the patient after surgery. The periodontal pack should remain in place until it is removed in the office at the next appointment. For the first three hours after the operation, we should avoid the hot foods, do not smoke, do not brush over the pack, during the first day, apply ice intermittently on the face over the operated area, avoid exertion, and rinse with 0.12% of chlorhexidine gluconate immediately after the surgery and twice daily. Now, incisions of the surgery. When accessibility and visibility of the root surface becomes difficult, we have to go for the uh, periodontal flap surgery and incisions should be made. Horizontal incisions are given ma in mesial and distal directions along the margins of gingiva, which are internal bevel incision, previcular incision, and interdental incision. Now in detail, internal bevel incision, also known as first incision or reverse bevel incision, by this, the flap is reflected to expose underlying bone defects. It is given with number 11 or 15 surgical scalpel, and its indications are primary incision of flap surgery to correct bone morphology, thick gingiva, deep periodontal pockets, and crown lengthening. The advantages are it provides knife phase margins, removes pocket lining, uh, the uninvolved outer surface of gingiva becomes the attached uh, gingiva when it is positioned apically. So next is solcular incision. It is second incision or crevicular incision. And uh, number 12 surgical blade is used to give this incision. Its indications are narrow band of attached gingiva, thin gingival margin, sallow periodontal pocket, as a secondary incision of flap surgery for regenerative procedures, and lastly, to reduce post-operative gingival recession. Third is- sorry to, sorry to interrupt, Dr. Zinia, we have crossed eight minutes. You have two minutes to go. Thank you for the reminder. The next is interdental incision. It is also called the third incision and it separates the collar of gingiva that is left after the first two incisions are given. Urban interdental knife is used to give this incision and its advantages are it allows for adequate access without increased flap reflection, especially in the presence of isolated deep pockets. It can be done on one or both ends of the horizontal incision. It provides flap flexibility, which helps in repositioning of a flap uh, reposition flaps need vertical incisions at both ends of the horizontal incisions. And next is vertical incisions. These are also called oblique releasing incisions and can be used on one or both ends of the horizontal incision, depending on the design or purpose of the flap. Here, the given arrow shows a uh, vertical incision and rules should be followed for vertical incisions. The incisions should always be made at line angle, never directly in the center of an interdental papilla or over radicular surface. Vertical incisions on the lingual or palatal areas should be preferably avoided, and short flaps with long apically directed horizontal incisions must be avoided as they compromise on the blood supply. Vertical incisions must extend beyond the mucosensible junction for the release of the flap, and the reference, uh, I have uh, read Newman and Karanja's clinical periodontology, 13th edition, and textbook of periodontology and oral implantology, second edition. <coughs> thank you. And lastly, I would like to thank my teachers uh, who helped me and guided me for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jinia Rai, for this presentation. It was thank beautiful you. and just on time. So I would like to remind our audience that after all the presentations, we are going to have a question answer session. 
So please grab your pen and papers because that will be very interesting. So now I would like to request our second presenter who is Dr. Tanziba Noreen Poncho from Holy Family Red Crescent Medical College Dental Unit session 2017 and 18. Please present your screen and you may start your presentation. Assalamu alaikum mm. everyone. Can you see me and hear me perfectly? Yes. yes. Okay. At first, I want to introduce myself. My sales and you are in control from Holy Family Education Medical College, Dental Unit Station 2017 and 18, and a participant of this paper presentation com competition from Michigan Group. And I want to thank you, Exis, for creating this amazing platform and our honorable teachers who always help us and, and motivate us. And best of luck to my fellow participants. Let's not delay, let's start my presentation. Today, our uh, topic is surgical procedure of periodontal diseases. And the topics that given to me are gingival surgery, which included gingivectomy and gingival plastic. And another one is flap surgery, which are common surgical procedure of periodontal disease. Let's start first with gingivectomy. What gingivectomy? The word gingivectomy means excision of the gingiva by removing the pocket wall Gingivectomy provides visibility and accessibility for complete calculus removal and through root planning. This creates a favorable environment for gingival healing and restoration of a physiologic gingival contour. Although gingivectomy was widely performed in the past, improved understanding of healing and the development of sophisticated flap techniques have related it to a laser role in, uh, in periodontal surgery. However, it remains an effective form of treatment when indicated. Let's see a visual presentation of gingivectomy, which shows us before and after surgery is looking. Isn't it beautiful? Now let's know the indication of gingivectomy. The indications are elimination of supraboni pockets if the pocket wall is fibrous and firm, and second one is elimination of gingival enlargement. Now we should know the contraindication of gingivectomy also. They are access to bone required, narrow zone of keratinized tissue, aesthetic, patients with high postoperative risk of bleeding. Now we will know the step-by-step -step procedure of gingivectomy. There are five steps. At first, the dentist injects local anesthetic into the gum to numb the area. Then he, will, he or she will use a scalpel or laser tool to cut away pieces of gum tissue. This is called soft tissue inclusion. Next, during the procedure, dentist will likely keep a suction full in, the, in your mouth to remove excess saliva. Next, once the tissue has been cut away, your dentist will likely use a laser tool to vaporize remaining tissue and shape the gum line. And the last step is our dentist put a soft putty-like substance and bandages on the area to protect our gums while they heal. That was all about gingivectomy. Now we move to gingivoplasty, which is similar to gingivectomy, though gingivoplasty is the process by which the gingiva are reshaped to correct deformities. Gingivoplasty is similar to gingivectomy, but with a different manner. This is a procedure performed to eliminate periodontal pockets along with the reshaping as part of the technique. Now this is also a visual representation of gingivoplasty, which shows us the before and after surgery looking. Now we all know about indication of gingivoplasty. Thick gingival margin, which is the first indication, and second one is treatment of gingival flap. Third one, unsatisfactory gingival contour following gingivectomy and gingival asymmetry. Now let's go through the uh, case, condition, case consideration which my, we might know for this procedure. In the case of gingivoplasty, healing is rapid and complications few, but gingivoplasty do not require flaps or sutures. And while these procedures may seem stressful, patients in good health can be expected to cope with them well. Still, patients under medical treatment or suffering from certain blood disease should consider the doctor's advice before taking the option into consideration. 
that's all about gingival plasty. When I talk about gingival tumor and gingival plasty, it looks similar, but there are quite some differences, which is gingival tumor is the removal of gum tissue, whether as gingival plasty is the reshaping of gums to improve functions, aesthetics, and other appearances. Now I want to go through my next uh, topic, which is flap or flap surgery. Before knowing about flap surgery, we all should know about definition of flap. What is flap? Flap is a portion of tissue or tissues transposed from a donor area to a recipient site with its own vascular supply. Here I add the picture of flap. Now, you, now I want to share you with periodontal flap. Periodontal flaps are used in surgical periodontal therapy to accomplish the following. Excess for root instrumentation, gingival resection, osseous resection, and periodontal regeneration. My, now I want to tell about indications of flap surgery. To gain excess for root development, bone regeneration in infrabony defects, focus on teeth in which a complete removal of root evidence is not possible by non-surgical therapy, areas with irregular bone contours or defects, which need to be corrected. Infrabony pockets distal to the first molars in grade two and grade three fractation. Uh, Persistent inflammation in moderate to deep pockets. Now we should know about contraindications of flap surgery too. They are lack of patient motivation or compliances, acute oral infections, which may spread systematic condition or immune compromised patients, such as uncontrolled diabetes mellitus patients. Now I want to tell you about steps of flap surgery. There are some steps. At first, the first incision parallel to the long exit of the teeth is a scalloped internal vavel incision to the alveolar crest starting 0.5 to 1 millimeter away from the gingival margin. The papilla are dissected and thin to heavy thickness like that of the remaining flap. Next step, full thickness flaps are reflected 2 to 3 millimeter away from the alveolar crest. Then the second clavicular is made in the gingival paper revised to detach the attachment apparatus from the root. And then the interdental tissue and the gingival collar are detached from the bone with a third incision. Further, the gingival collar and granulation tissue are removed with curates. The root surfaces are scaled and planned. Residual periodontal fibers attached to the teeth surface should not be disturbed. Next, bone architecture is not corrected unless it prevents intimate flap adaptation. If the effort is made to adapt the facial and lingual interdental tissue in such a way that no of suturing the flap may be thin to allow for close adaptation of the gingiva around the entire circumference of the teeth. And the last step is the flaps are stabilized with suture and covered with the surgical bracing. Now I try to do a, uh, give you a visual representation of periodontal surgery. Although my uh, co-participant, Dr. Jinya Roy Apu, talked about incision, but I thought that as the uh, incision is fundamental for any surgery, so I want to tell you in short about incision. At surgical incisions in a cut made through the skin and soft tissue to facelift an operation of procedure. Periodontal surgery involves the use of horizontal, medial, distal, and vertical, which is occlusal apical, uh, apical incision. Surgical blade is used most often to make these incisions. We can say that incisions are of two types, horizontal incisions and vertical incisions. What is horizontal incision? Horizontal incisions are directed along the gingiva in a medial or distal direction. Flex can be reflected with the use of only horizontal incisions. Next, I want to tell you about vertical incisions. Vertical or oblique releasing incisions can be used on one or both ends of the horizontal incision. 
depending on the design and purpose of the flap. Vertical incisions at both ends may be necessary <clears throat> if the flap is to be spatially displaced. Vertical incisions must extend beyond the mucogingival junction to reach the alveolar mucosal junction to reach the alveolar mucosa. The, uh, this allows for the release of the flap to be displaced. In general, vertical incisions in the lingual and palatal areas are avoided. That is all about my presentation. I tried my level best, uh, but uh, dear teachers and judges, pardon my mistake and best of look, uh, luck to my co-participants and Allah Hafiz. Thank you so much, Dr. Tanziba, for your amazing presentation. I hope the judges love the presentation. So I would again ask my audience to join and comment as I can see that lots of people are commenting and encouraging our participants. So let's move forward with our program. Our third participant is Dr. Dr. Troy Goshami from Sar Sarimullah Medical College Dental Unit, session 2017-18. I would like to request you to start your presentation, please. Is it visible? Yes, I can see. Namaskar to everyone. Uh, I am Troy Goshami from Sarsalunga Medical College. Now I am in fourth year. Uh, and my medical college is the oldest medical college in our country. And thanks to Access Dental School for organizing a, a remarkable competition. And I'm grateful, I'm very grateful to my honorable judges and my respectable teachers uh, to give me a uh, PCS opportunity. So uh, my topic is uh, peri uh, surgical periodontal procedure. So my content is uh, mucogingival surgery, free gingival graft, connective tissue graft, vestibuloplasty, phrenectomy, phrenotomy, uh, osteo surgery, osteotomy, osteotomy, and periodontal regeneration, bone healing, bone graft materials. That's my content. So my first topic is mucogingival surgery. Mucogingival surgery, that means uh, it is a surgical uh, procedure for the correction of relationship between uh, gingiva, between gingiva and oral mucosa membrane. And but the three uh, specific points uh, at a uh, vestibule and at a gingiva and the frenula. And this is the frenula. So uh, it is a very hard to memorize it. So this is a mnemonic how to memorize it Argentina versus uh, France. Argentina, uh, that means so say, uh, at a gingiva, VS, that means so it's a vestibule shallow, and France, that means so it's a frenula. Uh, so it is easy to memorize it. Then, uh, mucogingival surgery. First of all, topic uh, is a free gingival graft. Free gingival graft, uh, that means it's a widened uh, bed of or bent of a keratinized tissue. Then, it's a connective tissue graft. This is a connective tissue graft, uh, root coverage, that means it's a root coverage root covers. Then it's a vestibuloplasty. Vestibuloplasty, that means a deepen the vestibule. This is the vestibuloplasty process and deepening, uh, deepening the vestibule. And my next uh, topic is, is a free gingival graft. Free gingival graft, a free graft by definition is trans uh, planted without a nourishing blood supply. So it must undergo revascularization from the recipient milk. It has two sides, a donor side and a recipient side. This is the whole This is the um, free uh, gingival graft surgery. And uh, um, it has the no minimum weight of atta gingiva has been established, but two millimeter is good amount. And atta gingiva, mainly atta gingiva, atta gingiva yeah, helps enhance uh, plug removal, improves aestheticness, and reduce the information around the teeth. And ideal thickness is 1 to 1.5 millimeter. And then connective tissue graft. Connective tissue graft, uh, this is a connective tissue graft process, the harvest the inner connective tissue only and not the epithelium. So it is less painful and patient during healing. And donor side should have enough atas gingiva and pellet. That means the pellet. Pellet is the common site for connective tissue graft and also free gingiva graft. 
next is uh, connective uh, tissue graft surgical technique. First of all, it is a root preparation. It is root preparation that incision uh, design tunnel uh, technique in the uh, recipient side. Then donor side incision. This is the first palatal donor side incision and donor side incision, second palatal incision. And it is parallel to the long axis of the tip. And then donor side. This is the donor side and uh, it is the uh, recipient side. And before, before operation and after operation, this is the condition. And then mucose invasive surgery, another topic is phrenectomy. Phrenectomy, that means, uh, this is a, uh, we know that this is a frenulum. This is a frenulum. Phrenectomy, that means the removal, completely removal of the frenulum. So uh, in this picture, we, uh, I show that the removal of the frenum, that is called phrenectomy. And phrenotomy, phrenotomy, that means just incision, incision of the frenum. Then indication is uh, phrenectomy when uh, papillary phrenal attachment, uh, gingival phrenal attachment, and ankylosis. And uh, technique of the phrenectomy. Technique of the phrenectomy, uh, there are uh, some techniques. Uh, first of all, uh, conventional or classical technique is uh, phrenolan, uh, when phrenolan attachment is developed, uh, incision done, then incision, then uh, fiber attachment removal, then suturing and post operation one month. This is the condition. And then Miller's technique, this is the Miller te uh, technique and VY plastic, that is the VY shape. So it is called VY plastic. Then the uh, our, uh, techniques of phrenectomy, that is Z plastic shape of the Z. And uh, phrenectomy by using electrocuratory uh, when a patient having a bleeding disorder, then it is done. And then laser phrenectomy. And uh, then osseous surgery, another topic is uh, osseous surgery. Osseous surgery, that means it's a modified bone of uh, support or altered by periodontal disease, either reshaping the alveolar process to achieve physiological form without removal of alveolar supporting bone or removal of alveolar bone. This is the before operation and after operation. And uh, 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 architecture, there I have the key architecture of bone uh, because uh, a clinician or a dentist when visualize the bone architecture, then uh, he determined the types of bony defect. So first of all, positive architecture, positive architecture, that means it is, it is also interdental bone and also it is radicular bone. When interdental bone is coronal to the radicular bone, it's called positive architecture. And when interdental bone is apical to the radical bone, it's called negative architecture. And when the interdental bone and radicular bone at the same height is called flat architecture. And then ostectomy. Ostectomy, that means it's a removal of the radicular or interradicular supporting bone and to eliminate the osseous deformity. And that is the site of ostectomy. That is the site of ostectomy. Then osteotomy. Osteotomy means removal of non-supporting bone. In this picture, I show you maxillary osteotomy. Uh, osteotomy kept five to six millimeter apical to apical root to maxillary tip, and it means thirty to thirty-five millimeter from the tip of the crown. From the tip of the crown, thirty to thirty-five millimeter. And then periodontal regeneration. This is the periodontal regeneration. Uh, uh, guided tissue generation. First of all, guided tissue generation. Uh, regenerate uh, in this content, regenerate bone, cementum, and periodontal ligament. Then, barrier membrane is the tank. This is a membrane. This is a membrane. Uh, prevents soft tissue downgrowth and permits hard tissue downgrowth. Bone graft is the damage, osteoconductive and osteoinductive and osteogenic. Uh, this, is the, this is the bone, alveolar bone. And biological agent is the healer, clears an environment conductive to tissue formation. This is the periodontal regeneration. And then mechanism, mechanism of mechanism of healing after surgery. Uh, uh, first of all, regeneration, then repair, reattachment, new attachment. So how is the uh, memorize it? Uh, Rain Ho. Rain Ho is a Chinese uh, famous singer. Uh, so re, 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 that means so regeneration, re, that means repair, mm -hmm. re, that means reattachment, and in this means new attachment. And ho, that means it's a healing. So healing process, so a core topic is very important. Regeneration, completely restore architecture and function. Repair, not completely restore architecture and function involving healing by scar or formation and long junctional epithelium. Reattachment, reunion of epithelium and connective tissue with root surface after incision or injury. And new attachment, embedding 
embedding of a new periodontal ligament fiber into new cementum that has have been previously deprived of its original attachment. This is the mechanism of healing. And then bone graft material. Bone graft materials, there are different types of bone graft materials. So, so I discuss about origin. Uh, autograft. Autograft, that means from the same individual, uh, example, extraoral, that means iliac crest, tibia, fibula, ribs, and intraoral, that means the skin, ceramic of the mandible, tuberosity, and all allograft from different individuals of some species, uh, mineralized and demineralized piece derived bone allograft. And then xenograft from different species, usually bovine, uh, bovine and porcine, bovine derived and porcine derived, alloplast, synthetic or inorganic, hydroxyapatite and calcium. And my uh, that's all about my presentation and reference from uh, clinical periodontology, new new man and Kalanja 13 edition and 10 edition and photos from uh, Google. Thank you, everyone. And please pardon my mistake from my judges. Thank you so much, Dr. Troy Goshami. So this was undoubtedly an interesting presentation, not only with knowledge, also with tips and tricks. So thank you so much. Now, for the judges, I would like to mention the times of our each presenter. As giving the deadline of 10 minutes, Dr. Jinia Rai has took nine minutes, 48 minutes. Dr. Tanziba has stayed nine minutes, 36 seconds. And Dr. Troy has taken eight minutes, 38 seconds. So I hope this helps a judgment. Now, I would like to start the question answer session of our today's competition. Firstly, I would like to request Dr. Professor Malika Shetty Rishi, ma'am. Mab, can you please unmute yourself? Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, in fact, I was quite impressed by uh, the paper presentation competition, the hard work uh, the students have done for this uh, session. A uh, wonderful job. Congratulations to all three of you. In fact, all three of you are winners for us, but we have to judge. So there will be just one winner. But don't stop your hard work because hard work and uh, obviously you learn from your teachers and hard work always pays. So uh, uh, so uh, I have few questions like uh, for uh, all three of them. In fact, uh, first, I think we'll start with uh, Jenya. Yes, uh, she's Okay. Uh, so it was a very good presentation. Uh, you are an undergraduate student, right, Jenya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, may I know your college once? I'm, I'm from City Dental College. City Dental College, fine. Okay, my first question to you is, you talked about, uh, I think your first slide was about pocket reduction uh, surgery. So uh, can you tell me the difference between pocket reduction and pocket elimination? Uh, did you mention about pocket elimination? So uh, what is the difference? Have you heard of this term pocket elimination? Not uh, that much, but... So you you mentioned about gingivectomy and I think a pikily displaced flap. So both of them actually belong to pocket elimination procedure. So gingivectomy is one procedure which actually eliminates the pocket yes, uh, down to the sulcus depth. Okay, so uh, just remember, this is a pocket elimination yes. procedure. So you I'm talked about... Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, according to me, pocket reduction surgery is uh, an attempt for the elevation of the disruptive cycle, mainly okay. to reduce the um, uh, bacteria count in the pockets. And uh, pocket elimination is something... Uh, which uh, reduces the inflammation and uh, uh, mainly saving of the teeth. Okay. 
uh, Jenya, my next question to you is, you talked about incisions, various incisions. So the first incision is the internal bevel incision. Okay, second incision you said is the crevicular. So uh, the internal bevel incision, can you tell me the objectives of internal bevel? I think you talked about it. The objectives of internal bevel incision. Ma'am, internal bevel incision is done primarily uh, like in the starting of uh, any uh, surgery. So it will be the primary incision and, uh, and it is done, ma'am, I should say the most advantages or I should say the uh, indications for that. Okay, uh, let me ask you this way. Why do you call it the reverse bevel incision? Any other name for internal bevel? I told you the answer. In fact, it is called the reverse bevel incision. So why do you think it is called as the reverse bevel incision? The internal bevel incision is also known as the reverse bevel. Mm -hmm. Why? Yes, ma'am. It can be given in the reverse direction. Uh, reverse direction it. of of which procedure? From the gingi uh, vectum incision, ma'am. Correct. Correct. So it is also known as the reverse bevel incision. And which blade generally you use for this incision? The internal um, number bevel incision. 15. 15, uh, number 15. Okay. My next question to you is, is smoking an absolute contraindication for any kind of surgical periodontal procedure? Um, you mentioned about smoking, like you should wait for three to four weeks. So my question is, uh, is smoking an absolute contraindication for periodontal procedure? Um, ma'am, it is a relative uh, contraindication because uh, it depends upon the patient uh, if he or she has the history of smoking or not. Anything else you would want to say about like <clears throat> a person who smokes? Ma'am, uh, mainly it alters the wound healing process. So <clears throat> it so affects the wound healing. Very good. Yes, ma'am. So I don't think it's an absolute contraindication, rather in that. Okay, good. Uh, Saima, may I know how many questions we have to ask or we can go on? Ma'am, ask for okay. Jenya. Jenya, one more question for you. Uh, you talked about periodontal dressing. So what one main advantage of periodontal dressing according to you? What is one most important uh, advantage of uh, mm. using a periodontal dressing? And do you support using a periodontal dressing? Or like, see, it is a controversial thing. Either you use a periodontal dressing or you don't. Okay. So what advantages do you think a uh, dressing can serve? Um, mainly, ma'am, periodontal dressings like zinc oxide, zinc fusanol, uh, based or non zinc or based dressings are used so, and mainly dressings are used uh, not they do not induce healing but they create an environment for healing that is uh, there won't be any contamination of bacteria and like that basically so, it is protective yes ma'am so periodontal dressings uh, have advantage so i prefer using periodontal dressings okay uh, you talked about flap as well. So uh, what is the name or what term you generally use for a flap without any vertical incision? What is it known as? Flap without any vertical incision. Ma'am, what only is the term? Incision? No, what is the term used for a flap without vertical incision? What is, what is it known as? Bidman flap? No, no. Those are different types of flaps you're talking about, modified Bidman. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking you the term. So that is an envelope flap. Yes. Okay, that is an envelope flap that is without any vertical incision. So what are the flaps when you give vertical incision? Can you uh, uh, name two major flaps when you give vertical incision? What are, what are they known as? Or what are the like different types of flaps when you give a vertical incision? So you have one vertical incision, you have two vertical incisions, any idea? Okay, a simple question. Uh, can you name some hemostatic agents? 
you talked about i think patient preparation and stuff so uh, can you name some hemostatic agents which are generally used for uh, periodontal surgeries yes ma'am you can just tell me the names yes ma'am hemostatic agents uh, they are used for bleeding control and uh, commonly used uh, hemostatic agents in case of periodontal surgery can be uh, Hemostatic lesion. Anybody talked about sutures? Have you read about suturing techniques? Sutures. Yes, yes, what yes. is so? What is it made up of? Like, can you classify sutures, or can you tell me the names of one or two sutures which you know? Um, there can be absorbable and non-absorbable. Uh, one example of non-absorbable. non absorbable is uh, proline sorry and absorbable are silk uh, nylon and they according to the filaments they can be multifilament monofilament and according to the source of origin they can be uh, artificial and natural natural when the silk and uh, artificial when it be clean what do you mean by wicking effect sorry ma'am wicking effect w i c k i n g wicking effect sorry ma'am it's something related to sutures since you talked about monofilament multifilament what is wicking effect Okay, tell me what is the rationale for doing a periodontal uh, surgery? Why do you need to do a periodontal surgical procedure? What is the rationale? You understand what do you mean by rationale? Um, uh, surgical something surgical is uh, uh, is a mainly lastly last alternative. So if the simple processes like the non-surgical techniques fail. uh in case of periodontal disease then we will go for the periodontal surgery but if uh, we if the anatomical conditions of the oral uh, cavity is much destroyed and something uh, more constructive is to be done then we go for periodontal surgery okay okay janiya thank you thank you ma'am so i have to ask the next participant or we are like ma'am as per your wish you can ask we have troy goshami and tanziba norin kontho you can also ask them questions okay so uh uh, uh okay i'll ask uh, tanziba norin yes ma'am Tanjiba, you did. No, I think you talked about. Uh, good evening. You talked about gingivectomy. You talked about gingivoplasty. So, can you tell me the incision? Uh, can you tell me uh, the procedure? Like, uh, with what instrument do you give the first incision in gingivectomy? With what instrument? And uh, what do you use? Like, the incisions in gingivectomy. you have like knives you heard of knives kirkland knife orbans knife so uh, what are the instruments generally used for uh, gingivectomy procedure um the knives instruments yeah sorry ma'am okay. you don't know okay can you throw some light on uh, gingivectomy by chemo surgery what chemicals you use for uh, gingivectomy procedure okay you've heard about laser you've heard about laser gingivectomy you use lasers for uh, gingivectomy so what is the advantage of using lasers 
as compared to the conventional normal procedure? Then in laser gingip, to me, there will be no bleeding. So uh, the patients who have bleeding problem, uh, they mm -hmm. don't have any problem for this. Uh, it is more safe, time consuming. Okay, anything else? There is less, less discomfort to the patient. Yes, ma'am. It's like quick. Uh, ma'am, I think side effects may be less. Sorry? Ma'am, I think that side effects may be less for laser gingivic to me. Let me tell you, uh, I asked you about chemo surgery. So two chemicals which are generally used are uh, sodium hypochlorite and 5% paraformaldehyde. Okay, so you have different methods like surgical gingivectomy by chemo surgery and by laser. So what one main difference do you think uh, between gingiv... I think you talked about differences between gingivectomy and plasty, if I'm not wrong. Yes, ma'am. You talked about the differences, right? So can you tell me one main difference between yes, gingivectomy and gingivoplasty? One main difference. When we no, attempt... Sorry? Um, both are for aesthetic purpose. For in gingivectomy, we have to remove gum. But in gingivoplasty, there may not be removal of gum, but uh, reshaping of gum. Uh, see, gingivect, okay, let me put it this way. If you have pockets, okay, and your gingiva is swollen, so you will do gingivectomy or gingivoplasty. Gingivo I'm asking you... Gingiv gingivoplasty is always done in the absence of pockets. Okay. Gingivectomy in the presence of. You talked about indications. So, indications, your first point was presence of supra bony pockets. You understood? So, this is one main difference between gingivectomy and plasty. Plasty is always done in the absence of pocket and gingivectomy in the. Like when you have supra bony pocket, supra bony periodontal abscess, and whatever indications you mentioned. Okay. So, uh, did you talk about, uh, I think your main uh, presentation mainly focused on gingivectomy, then a little bit about flap. So, did you talk about healing after gingivectomy? Uh, no, ma'am. So, when do you think your uh, epithelial repair, generally, you know, epithelium, it gets, epithelial repair takes place. So, after how much time of gingivectomy does this happen? I don't know, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. You, you've heard of GCF, gingival clavicular fluid? Yes, ma'am. You've heard of GCF. So do you think, very simple, do you think after gingivectomy procedure, your GCF flow, that is uh, the flow of GCF will increase or decrease? Ma'am, I think it will be decreased. It will? Decreased. Initially, it will decrease or increase? Then I think it decreases. Okay. So initially it increases. Maximum flow reaches after one week. Maximum flow of GCF is after one week and thereafter gradually it declines. Okay. You talked about flap as well. You yes, talked about flap. Can you name the three incisions of flap surgery? In horizontal incisions and vertical incisions. Okay. Can you classify flaps? Can you classify flaps? You've heard of full thickness, partial thickness flap? Yes, ma'am. You've heard of that? So what is that actually? What is full thickness flap? You've heard of that? Oh, you've heard of uh, how do you uh, like classify flaps according to the management of papilla? Have you heard of papilla preservation flap? Have you heard of that? Yes, ma'am. I read it, but I okay. forgot it right now. Okay, okay. So you just remember, look, this is very, very important classification of uh, flaps. Okay, partial thickness based on the management of papilla, based on the exposure of bone and stuff. So you just... Uh, because this is the basics, okay? 
can you tell me what is critical probing depth i think this is a pg question i should not be asking you but then uh, what is uh, critical probing depth okay what is probing depth you know pocket depth why do you do flap mam for removing pain okay uh, thank you uh, tanjiba thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, a next participant troy yes ma'am troy okay you said you are from which college sarsal hula medical college dental unit okay nice presentation i think you talked about more about like uh, mucogingival surgery right what is the other name of mucogingival surgery or what is the newer name of mucogingival surgery have you heard of periodontal plastic surgery that is the other name it is a newer name periodontal plastic surgery okay uh you talked about various uh, phenal attachments can you classify phenal attachments and it was given by whom and in which year can you question to please you talked about uh, phenal attachments phrenum you talked about it no phrenum. capillary phrenum. so can you classify phenal attachments for me and uh, uh, phrenal attachment gingival attachment uh the mucosal attachment uh lingual capillary capillary also capillary one more one more one more is there you heard about papilla penetrating okay papilla penetrating is the fourth and it was given by who papilla penetrating and no uh, classification was given by who who had classified who classified the phrenal attachments so it was classified by plasic in the year 1974 okay this is how it was classified mucosal papillary gingival and papilla penetrating right papilla penetrating ji okay so uh, the flap thickness like like uh, the graft thickness is around 1.5 you told it is 1 to 1.5 mm right yes ma'am the free gingival graft the graft thickness is 1 to 1.5 mm you heard of this term creeping attachment creeping attachment it is related to your free gingival graft Creeping attachment, ma'am. Sorry, I can read it, but okay, no problem. My next question Sorry. is: Can you elaborate on uh, the steps uh, in osseous surgery, osseous surgical procedure? What are the steps? You talked about osseous resection, right? Osteotomy, mm -hmm. osteoplasty. So, what are the steps? Right. So, what are the steps in osseous resection? Steps. there are four steps and uh, first of all uh, incision uh, steps in osseous re resection procedure steps of osseous resection sorry ma'am okay you talked about osteotomy osteoplasty osteotomy right yes so what is uh, the difference between osteotomy and osteoplasty mam uh, osteo osteotomy that mean complete removal of the uh, supporting bone supporting bone fine what is osteoplasty and mam uh, um, osteoplasty also uh, 
and uh, without removal of the uh, supporting bone uh, so do you shaping. just what do you do you remove it or you reshape it reshape 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 okay, okay. like reshape. you have gingivoplasty so osteoplasty so uh, what is the difference between like the instruments the method for osteotomy what do you use what do you use to cut bone what do you use Uh, um, uh, for uh, aesthetic, uh, aesthetic. No, uh, my question is instrument. which instrument? Which instrument you use? Like you use a burr, you use a file for removal of supporting the, bone. Uh, particle uh, grooving. How do you remove bone with a burr or with a file? Um, uh, radicular uh, blending. Okay, that is one of the steps for osseous resection. One step is radicular blending. Second. Ma'am, the approach flattening uh, of the bone. Flattening of interproximal bone. Okay, the first step. Ma'am, not such a great, graduate. It's vertical. Gradualizing. Okay, gradualizing the mar. Okay, gradualizing the marginal bone. And one more is left. Good attempt. Gradualizing of the bone. So the last one, the first one, in fact, is vertical grooving. Okay. Then, ma'am, what's the reshape? Reshape that you've that you've told. There are four steps. You mentioned three. The last one I told you. Ma'am, what's the scraping? A scraping. So that was correct. That was correct. In fact, let me. My next question is: I was asking you the instruments, whether you use a burr or a file for osteotomy, and similarly for osteoplasty, what do you use? Whether you use a burr or a file, I'm asking you the difference. Which instrument you normally use? Ma'am, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, grooving. No, you just tell me the name of the inch. Like for osteotomy, when you remove bone, do you use a burr or a file? You know what is a burr? You know what is a burr? No. How do you no. cut bone? How do you cut bone? With a micro motor? You know what is a micro motor, a rotor? No. Do you have that burr inside? I don't know about it. Okay. Sorry, ma'am. No problem. So let me tell you, osteoplasty generally is done with a burr and osteotomy with a file. That is the hand instrument. Okay. And uh, you mentioned about, I think, uh, membranes as well. Guided tissue regeneration. Can you tell me the concept of guided tissue regeneration? Ma'am, uh, guided tissue regeneration, ma'am. Uh, Cementum, uh, periodontal ligament. Sorry? Um, uh, guided tissue regeneration, uh, I mean, this content, uh, periodontal ligament, uh, cementum. Can you name some membranes for GTR, guided tissue regeneration? Just the names of have you heard of collagen, collagen membrane? What are GTR Biological membranes? Membrane. Collagen. Collagen membrane. Uh, biological membrane. And? Sorry, ma'am. Okay. You talked about osteoconductive, osteoinductive, right? Somewhere uh, in your slides, you mentioned about osteoconductive. So osteoconductive is a physical process or a chemical process? You know uh, what is osteoconduction, osteoinduction? Ma'am, uh, physical process. Osteo? Osteoconduction is a physical, physical process. process. 
Okay. Can you name some bone grafts? Just the names. Names of bone grafts. Bone graft materials. Bone graft materials. Uh, uh, L of mem the teen uh to the uh cell point I would say uh teen then would say uh the person direct would say both in uh or cane um then mem uh hydroxy calcium hydroxy apartheid. Okay. So these are basically alloplastic materials, right? Yes, ma'am. Have you heard of allografts? Allograft, uh, ma'am, uh, same uh, uh, individual. Allograft, can you name some allografts? One or two allografts if you heard of? Hello, graft. I'm uh, mineralized and uh, I'm demineralized uh, uh, freeze uh, uh, de uh, derived bone allograft. Correct. Demineralized, freeze dried, and uh, freeze de uh, derived uh, al bone allograft. Okay, what is bone blend? Have you heard of bone blend? Uh, no, you just tell me it comes under which category of bone graft, whether it is autograft, allograft, or uh, alloplastic material. What is it? I'm pushing the place. I'm saying what is bone blend? Uh, other human allograft, when other uh, individual of the same species, okay. allograft. No, no. Can you name some autographs? Examples of autographs. Autographs, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, extra oral, uh, iliac crest, then tibia, uh, then ribs, uh, intra oral, ma'am, uh, then uh, 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 remus. University. Hello. You talked about, I was not able to hear you, sorry. Autographs. Um, autographs are extra oral, that means such a tibia, then yeah. uh, iliac crest, and yeah, intra oral, that means such a teen, uh, then such a ramus, uh, the mandible, then such a tibar city. Okay. Can you tell me uh, if at all you've read about uh, the ratio of calcium and phosphate in hydroxyapatite? Hydroxyapatite is basically made up of what uh, uh, I would say material. It is calcium and phosphate, hydroxyapatite. So can you tell me the ratio? Ratio of calcium and phosphate in hydroxyapatite bone graft. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, you've heard of perioglass? Uh, yes, what is it? Synthetic, what is... Uh, synthetic uh, materials. Okay, and uh, any other uh, bioactive glass you know? One is perioglass. Any other bioactive glass which you know? Imperial glass and synthetic uh, glass. Have you heard of biograin? What is the diameter of uh, the particles? Diameter of perioglass? The diameter of the particles which are there? Diameter. Sorry, ma'am. Okay. 
Uh, thank you, Troy. Thank you. Uh, in fact, a great effort and great attempt by all three of you. So for me, all three are winners. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. You thank do. you so much, ma'am, for your thank incredible you, you. questions. And I surely know that these questions also help the participants to know more about the topic and about the presentation. So next, I Thank would you. like to request Dr. Bennett Fernandez, sir, to please ask questions to our participants. Okay, so uh, you all have finished one round of uh, questions <laughs> and uh, you must have been already saturated with these questions. So I will uh, keep my questions a little bit more uh, simpler, keeping in mind the uh, UG level, which uh, though these questions uh, are commonplace, which uh, Dr. Malika has asked in the Viva Vose exams of the undergraduate <laughs> level <laughs> in <laughs> India. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just with some one or two or three <laughs> questions which were of PG level, but otherwise uh, they are very much uh, asked in uh, India. Uh, and uh, since we are having the support, uh, thanks to Dr. Anupam Podar, sir, to get ex exposure to these kind of levels, this kind of training will help you if in case you are planning to write some foreign exams like Australia, or MFDS of uh, UK and things like that. That's when you will remember, sir. That's when you'll remember Dr. Malika. That's when you'll remember mm -hmm. me about these questions. Oh yeah, because there is a lot of perio which has been asked. Okay. So, <clears throat> the, uh, so let's get to the questioning now. So coming to the first uh, Jenny Rai. Yes, sir. Am I? Yeah. So uh, you presented the uh, <clears throat> beginning, like an outlook into periodontal surgery, right? Yes. I mean, how periodontal surgery starts and when do we do? So suppose a, a patient comes, okay? Now let's say you have graduated. Now suppose a patient comes, when will you consider this patient uh, let's say he's having now, when you check seven millimeter pockets all over the, I'm not going to talk too much about clinical attachment loss because then you might get lost away. So let's just talk from pocket sense, uh, seven millimeter pockets. So how would you go about first in treating this patient? Sorry, if a patient with uh, seven millimeter pocket depth, Yes, he's come to you now and say, do my treatment. Then there is the case of uh, the pocket depth of 7 millimeter. Then firstly, sir, we will check the periodontal condition uh, and we'll go for the uh, uh, scaling and root planning as the pocket depth is uh, more. And after that, uh, we'll give <clears> some <throat> medications to help the healing process. Um, we have to uh, give periodontal uh, dressings. Uh, and after a week, we will be observing the patient. Uh, so I think if, uh, if with that uh, procedure, the treatment is successful, then it is okay. But if further complications arise, then we have to uh, move on to the surgical aids. Okay, so now you did the scaling and root planing. Okay, I just want to highlight one point here. So the new, I mean, it's not new anymore. The new classification has come out now. It's called the 2017 International Workshop Classification which has been ratified by the American Academy of Periodontology as well as the European Federation of Periodontology. And having said that, now that is like old talk because now we talk about the 
treatment guidelines which came about recently <clears throat> Now, in these new treatment guidelines, we actually do not even use these terms scaling and root planning. The new terminology what we use is PMPR. We call that as professional mechanical plaque removal. Okay. So I'll repeat it again PMPR, professional mechanical plaque removal. So you will be doing that. It is a slightly modified term of what we would be calling as periodontal debridement or what you would also, in simple before we wish to say oral prophylaxis, which may be used very routinely for everyone. But we should go one step further into that. Now, having said that, so now your seven millimeter pocket, once you treat, I'm sure it, there will be some healing, but that seven millimeter pocket is not going to become your what is the normal healthy gingival sulcus? The second question. Then I will continue with my discussion. So the normal pocket depth? Uh, you do not say a normal pocket depth. You will say normal sulcus depth. There is nothing. Pocket is uh, mm -hmm. patho pathological condition. Yes. Uh, so what is the normal uh, uh, sulcus depth? Three meter or less than that. Three millimeter or less than that. Yeah, so around two to three millimeter. So now continuing with that, we did the scaling and you got a pocket reduction of around one millimeter. So now your seven millimeter pockets, which you checked with your periodontal probe became six millimeters. Yes, yes it reduced. So uh, Madam asked a very good question about the critical probing depth. So anything yes. above five yes. Meters is generally we consider a candidate for the periodontal surgery. Okay. And uh, this is also like the norm which is followed in UK. Uh, the GDP will up to five millimeter, it's in your hands. GDP means general dental practitioner. So he will treat it. And anything more than five millimeters, he'll say go and refer the periodontal specialist, or I will call the periodontal specialist to treat it. So you would treat it nicely up till that depth. And then now the third important question, when will this patient, what is the time <laughs> gap between your scaling and root planing to convert this patient now into your, I'm talking all other things we have considered like the smoking or maybe if he's a diabetic, it's in control. So now when will we consider him to take him up as periodontal, flap surgery if he would like to do for him? What is the time gap? How much gap should be given? Is it like today, I, for example, is it like today I did the scaling and then, okay, we wait three days or we wait uh, one week and then next week I call my, okay, I know it is called the specialist and we start off doing periodontal surgery. Is it like that? Or do so we need to- will take two to three weeks two to three weeks. Well, that's not what is said in the textbook of Karanza. Right, I mean, I'm sure you are following that. So you need to give at least four to five weeks, provided you have done your scaling. And of course, in your terms, if you have said, if you are done even the root planing. And most importantly, which we always tend to forget and which should be emphasized maximum, if you want to get good outcomes, when we are doing regenerative, therapy that is using bone graft materials, but we tend to just verbally give it. It's called as the oral hygiene instructions. Yeah, so we tend to take it very uh, simply. We just tell you must brush your teeth because you have been brushing from small. If we see some spaces, we might even tell use floss yeah. or use interdental brush, but you need to spend time because the new treatment guidelines correlate in line with the plaque score, the bleeding score, and then you take up the patient for periodontal surgery. If that patient does not fit, you tell him this is the way it is. You are not a suitable candidate for periodontal surgery. Okay, then it is your call to the patient. So that is a, the full mouth plaque scores full mouth bleeding scores, 
for which you also need to show him how he has to use the interdental brush, how he has to do this thing. And that is why that four to five. So in case you might recall him again, you might counsel him again about his plaque, things like that. You might see on the lingual aspect, some calculus. And that's when you will take up this patient for this. We don't, that is why just rush okay, to take up the case for periodontal surgery. So that is why that, that was the third question. Now, uh, you sh should understand the difference between pocket reduction surgery and pocket elimination surgery. Okay, you mentioned some flap procedures, right? But none of your, none of the three mentioned about uh, modified Whitman flap, or I mean, you just mentioned it as such, not in depth, like well, how you would go about it. What are the indications? Of course, I do understand that time constraints are there, uh, but you need to make your presentation in such a way that it covers these important because uh, this modified Whitman flap is a time tested, which is there from such a long time modified Whitman flap, the undisplaced flap, the apically displaced flap. So can you tell me among these different, which is the best way, which flap is the best for eliminating the pockets? But since it is a topic of periodontal surgery. Yes. Which technique? Yes. This type of flap, maybe, sir. The modified Whitman flap? No, because it's been used the most. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so the undisplaced flap, that is the best way. And of course, even the gingivectomy technique can be used. Of course, you have other ways in which, uh, uh, like the apically displaced, which can also convert and become the attached gingiva, which is very important. And then also uh, the secondary goal of the pocket getting eliminated. But uh, other than that, these two are the best techniques. So like from viewpoint of your MCQs or things like that, you should uh, know this uh, kind of a thing. Okay. Um, Otherwise, overall, you'll have all presented uh, well, but I think you need to organize it in a little bit more precise uh, manner, okay? Uh, can you tell me any contraindication for periodontal surgery? Contraindications of periodontal surgery, sir? Sir, uh, if uh, the oral cavity is uh, very uh, unhygienic, that is, even after uh, scaling and uh, yeah. even after the plaque removal, the condition can't be maintained, then we can't further go for the periodontal surgery. And uh, if, uh, in case of uh, medically compromised patients, uh, maybe they are selective medically compromised patients that can't go to this type of surgery. And uh, in case of malignancy, uh, and uh, uh, the pregnant woman, and uh, in case of uh, uncontrolled diabetes, uh, and just if there is some bleeding disorders, then we can't further go for the uh, periodontal surgery. So. What about if he's a smoker? Sir, uh, so smokers, uh, as already told, it is not an absolute uh, absolute contraindication, but it depends, sir, because uh, if uh, the okay. smoking habit is... Okay, uh, okay, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I will say he's smoking... 20 cigarettes a day. Yes, sir. Yes, a smoking habit in that. So, day. can we do or we should not do? So, we can't. Yeah. Okay. So, that is uh, especially in the new classification, it has been uh, considered uh, as one of the important uh, risk factors. And they say that you need to modify that risk factor first. Because if you are going to be charging that patient for the 
membrane and the bone graft material which you are going to be using and then later on the patient will say i paid so much and this thing or maybe you are taking up a placing lot of implants so the consent should be taken prior and you should inform the patient that in that situation only you can go ahead with that but otherwise always better to err towards the side of caution keep the interval visits short and motivate the patient to control his smoking so tobacco cessation should be an important part of your treatment plan okay so that's all i would uh, say for you and we will move on to the next uh, is uh, tanbia norin you're welcome so tanbia norin uh actually uh, i just want to say uh, one thing mainly about your presentation i don't know i don't know whether it was only for me it was first it was like in a vertical way as if like were you like doing it through the mobile or something yes sir i have ah. no laptop i have pc but that haven't camera so i have to do it mobile okay okay that's why I, like i wondering like was it like some problem from my side like sometimes it happens so i just wanted to clarify so yeah okay so uh, can you tell me uh, what is the meaning of gingivectomy ectomy you know the word ectomy i mean if you split the word like periodontium we say no peri means around the tooth like that periodontium so ginger back to me this is uh, this ginger basic ginger. understanding you should have between ectomy gingivectomy and gingivoplasty then you will understand uh, so can you just tell me that so ectomy means a uh, removal in any surgery and fantastic when we when we will talk about gingivectomy it might be removal of gum and uh, gingivoplasty is not removal but reshaping okay so now one thing i want to tell whenever you are doing a scientific presentation when there are all doctors like this right you should always try to use the scientific terms so you should use the term gingiva now when you are talking to a patient if you nowadays patients understand but uh, you can use the word gum but when you are talking with doctors always better to use the scientific term gingiva okay. it looks more uh, appropriate and uh, correct for the platform okay so that is the thing uh the second thing i i noticed was you mentioned about the steps of lap surgery uh is this steps for all the surgery i mean like you just mentioned in general i mean you did not differentiate between whether it is a modified wedman lap surgery or undisplaced lap surgery or apically displaced lap surgery i mean there are steps uh, things which will be a little common uh, certain incisions which you mentioned and all may be common but there are differences still right how you would okay. give the um, uh, incision whether it is to the depth of the whether you are giving the bleeding points all these things are to be kept in mind okay when you are telling because you cannot just generalize it steps for flap surgery okay yes. and one uh, and the other thing is whenever you are getting the day, because nowadays more than talking lot of uh, stuff is available online you can get it but you should know how to correlate that stuff with the textbook okay for example uh, usage of the terms um, correlating it with the uh, textbook with in relation to the steps how it is mentioned that is very important okay when you are talking about this periodontal surgical procedure um you cannot just randomly uh, talk like that yeah so yes, i will remember hmm. now even in gingivectomy there is something called as the continuous incision and the discontinuous incision and uh, can you tell me uh, the advantage or between you doing a laser gingivectomy and doing with a scalpel gingivectomy uh, sir so laser gingivectomy i told before uh, laser gingivectomy maybe uh, there will be no bleeding so it might be helpful for the patients who are uh, who have bleeding problem it may be time consuming 
uh, uh, it may be most comfortable for uh, for the patient. In which one? In which one? Using? Uh, sir, laser gingivectomy. <clears throat> okay. What about uh, uh, periodontal dressing? Is it uh, needed when we are doing a laser gingivectomy? Uh, so it might not be needed. I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. So we do not give we do not give periodontal dressing uh, when we do uh, laser gingivectomy because we call that as a laser bandage. We do a little photo biomodulation, and that itself will help about in bringing the healing process. Mm -hmm. And you do not need to do any uh, extra periodontal dressing using copac or any other dressing material. Okay, so that is the added benefit. Now, why that helps also is because of that extra cost of which will come on the patient for the periodontal dressing, right? Of course, the laser machine cost is not on the patient in the real sense, it's more on you. But this cost though, surely you will add on to the patient, the periodontal dressing pack, right? Uh, because the laser, you can use it for so many other things, uh, other uh, procedures also, whether it is a diode laser or whether it is a R tissue, erbium laser also, which you call it as an all tissue laser. Okay. Having said that, uh, can you tell me one indication or rather one contraindication when not to do the gingivectomy procedure? Uh, so indication periodontal pocket or supra uh, bone pocket mm -hmm. and contraindication it might be uh, who have bleeding disorders. That is common for everyone, <laughs> even flap surgery, this thing. Systemically healthy. Other than that? Or so aesthetic because it might not be uh, more aesthetic purpose as general plasty. So it might be contraindicated for aesthetic purpose. Okay, one thing I understand, gingivoplasty is different from gingivectomy, okay? Plasty always is like a recontouring or festooning. You know, you, you would have done this uh, dentures, right? Dentures. Uh, you, you do that festooning and something like that to give that nice appearance in between for your dentures. Remember? Uh, yeah, the final one. Yeah, so that's what's more like a little bit is your plasty to give that sluice waste for the food to go away and things like that. So that's what is your gingivoplasty. Okay, whereas gingivectomy is something very definitive procedure. Yeah, okay, so that you should uh, understand this uh, thing. Uh, can you tell me the uh, procedure or the flap surgery which is uh, very much important in the anterior region for aesthetics, like uh, which technique we would use, which flap procedure we would use, or which is a gingivectomy or some flap procedure, or anything like that. I don't know, sir. Sorry. Okay, so if you had uh, listened to uh, uh, Dr. Malika, she had mentioned something about the papilla preservation flap. Right. So that is the one of the best uh, flap to be used in the anterior. So it has been modified even compared to when I was studying it. OK, so we had the Takai, which is there in Karanza, but now it is modified it further with the modified papilla preservation and the simplified uh, papilla preservation, which is a modification of this modified papilla. So these are the newer techniques which have come, which are very helpful. OK, so which a little bit, I mean, at least you should just know that they are there and uh, things like that. But overall, at your level, you should know best technique for anterior aesthetic is the papilla preservation technique. Okay, so that you should know. So let's move on. So thank you very much. Uh, you, yeah, so let's move on to the uh, third person, Proji Goswami. Yeah, so I liked actually very much Argentina versus uh, France. <laughs> Argentina versus France. <laughs> okay, but uh, having said that, uh, the mnemonics are good, but you need to organize your contents. It is like you have just listed all the procedures. Chuck, 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 chuck. 
rather than grouping them in a proper order or a proper way, uh, like you know, periodontal plastic surgeries, periodontal regenerative surgeries, so like that, you know, advanced techniques. Yeah, so you can classify this in that fashion. Okay, so then the number of uh, things come down, and also in that limited time, you can focus on the topic. Yeah, very nicely. So having said that, do you know who is the? You have heard of the term plastic surgery? In uh, medical, you would have yes, heard sir. of plastic plastic yes, surgery. Yes, sir. Have you heard of the term plastic surgery? Plastic surgery. Suppose I get some injury on my face, then we go to the plastic surgeon. Have you heard of that? No. Yes, sir. Plastic surgery. Yes. That means uh, somehow after accident or uh, change the reshape or injury to reshape uh, face. So we have that similar in perio. So it's called as. Periodontal Video. plastic surgery. Video. Yeah. Per yes, yeah. Sir. Perioplastic. Yes, sir. Do you know who coined that term? Yes, sir. Question, please, sir. Who gave that term? Who gave that name? So it is P.D. Miller. You have heard of recession classification? Recession, we do, right? Recession classification. Miller classification. Miller. It's that same Miller, P.D. Miller, Preston Dallas Miller. And he's just 82 years old, and he'll be coming for our ISP conference as one of the keynote speakers. Uh, yes, I know that yes. uh, sir has registered for the conference. Uh, so he'll be uh, the person. He's the one who coined this term perioplastic surgery so you should know these uh, things like these are the basic and who coined the term uh, muco gingival surgery uh, Fredman. Fredman. Fredman, yes Fredman. so Friedman coined the term uh, this uh, muco gingival surgery now you mentioned about this uh, phrenectomy right um, can we do phrenectomy with the laser? Yes, sir. Laser phrenectomy. We can do. So, can you tell? Uh, do, can you think like what can be the advantage of uh, doing it with the laser compared to maybe doing it uh, with a scalpel? Uh, sir, it is comfortable. Sir, it is. Uh, comfortable to the patient and um, some patients are breeding disorder uh, then I try this then uh, uh, what about sutures less time what about sutures uh, would we uh, have to play sutures when we are doing with laser yes sir have you to place the sutures we have to do suturing after Doing sir, free uh, laser free neck to me. Laser, sir, laser uh, sir, is healing uh, rapid to a less side, uh, healing rapid. No, no, no. Uh, less side you effect. answer whether we need to place suture in yes or no. I mean, do we need to place the suture or we don't need to place suture? Only that much you tell. Healing we'll see later on. Mm -hmm. We are still in initial steps. Piece, okay, the question is do we need or require to place sutures following laser phrenectomy procedure? Um, it's either yes or no. Or I don't know, maybe you'll say maybe. This maybe no. <laughs> maybe no. Oh my God. So that is the advantage, okay? So generally, when we do a laser phrenectomy, that is why people are going uh, this thing ahead with that is because we do not need to place sutures. And of course, not. Yeah, you do not require to place sutures. Not needed. 
not needed. Yes, sir. Not needed to them. Yes. And you do the photobiomodulation, and that only forms the laser bandage, and that heals up nicely. Okay. But having said that, uh, it's not a real yes, full depth phrenectomy which we do with the laser. Mm -hmm. You know. But it's okay. I mean, the patient is comfortable and we don't go up to the full depth of the bone and things like that. And like how the procedures you mentioned, the Y plus T and the different surgical, the Z plus T, the different techniques. So you should know that. Okay, the difference. Because now you're in the modern. We cannot just go back. Those are the older ways where we used to do the using the scalpel. Nowadays, we use more of the diode lasers. We use the lasers for doing this. Of course, if you are having, again, the all tissue laser, the erbium laser, which can be used both for hard tissue and soft tissue, you can go ahead and do the same. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the GTR concept. What is GTR? Uh, generalized tissue regeneration. Guided no, tissue. It's guided. Guided. Guided, guided tissue generation. Mm. Guided so, tissue. Yes. So can you tell there are four people involved there, right? There are four players, four cells, four tissues which are competing there. So which tissue do you want in guided tissue regeneration to win the race? I'm saying in simple terms. So you can use this similar way in future to remember also. Four people are there, right? It's Competing okay. to fill that place. The periodontal ligament cells, the connective Cement, tissue cells. The connective tissue cells, epithelial cells. So who is it who comes and wins the race there first? So this is a very important concept, huh? which you should know. This is like sir, basics. Uh, sir, um, maybe uh, periodontal ligament cells. Very good, fantastic. So we want the periodontal ligament cells. But actually, if you see, the turnover rate of the epithelium is the highest. So it runs fast and it, if it slides down and you, it gets he, uh, the healing by that, it forms the ju long junctional epithelium, which is not a very strong attachment. So we want actually, that is why we use the guided tissue membrane, right? So we have the different types of membranes, okay? Uh, whether it's absorbable, non-absorbable, Okay, or reinforced, non-reinforced. Okay, another thing you should understand is there is something called as GBR. Because we are in periodontal surgery, there's something called as GBR. What is that? It's simple. I mean, uh, it's not a, a very difficult thing. It's simple. If you know GTR, you will know GBR. It is guided bone regeneration. Okay. Now this GBR is, yeah, this is very important when you're doing implants. But generally, the membranes are not exactly the same as what you're using for the GTR membrane. That is why you should see on the cover when you're selecting the membrane, the procedure. Like sometimes you are the dentist and the periodont, uh, you'll call the specialist and he'll say, buy the membrane. So you don't just buy any membrane. You see what is the procedure, whether it is a GTR procedure going to be done or you're because of the space which is there missing and then maybe you want to put implant later on. So you want to develop the bone thickness there and do the guided bone regeneration. So that membrane is a little yeah, different. Guided bone regeneration. Yes. So you should know the difference. Now, which graph you mentioned? So many, right? Autograph, allograph, alloplast. So many materials and so which is the gold standard material <clears throat> for graphing? Yes, sir. Uh, question, the please, sir. Which is the gold standard <clears throat> material to replace the missing? <clears throat> bone 
gold standard. You sir, mentioned uh, different, right? You showed one nice table. Yes, sir. Uh, in your presentation. Yeah. Mineralized yeah. and uh, uh, mineralized and uh, yes, sir, uh, <clears throat> demineralized uh, piece uh, debris bone graft, allograft. No, no, it's your oh, sir, uh, autograph, autograph, oh, sir. autograph, so, autograph, yeah. same individual, same individual, yeah. autograph. Yeah, so autographs are the, uh, so you mentioned that time when Madam asked you, you told about the different sites, intraoral sites, as well as the extraoral sites, which it yes, can sir. be harvested. Yes, yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, always remember that the own is always the best. Okay, the bone from the areas. So, uh, do you know how we can harvest that bone graft from the oral cavity? What are the ways to get that bone graft material? You know that autograph is good, but how to get that graft now? What we have to do? You mentioned the different areas where we can harvest. How do we harvest it? So you can use something called as trephines. Okay, trephines, which yes. can remove the core. Or you can use something called as bone scrapers. Okay, so these are instruments which you can use to get the core of bone in which you can use to use the, uh, how you can use for the grafting. Okay, so you should uh, know this kind of thing. Why this is important is uh, because many a times you, uh, if you can talk to the patient, patient, you will have to convince the patient that we'll try to use your own, but there will be another site maybe where you need to remove uh, some amount. So like that you have to tell, or do you want me to buy another additional material? The cost will be a little more. So like that, when you are convincing the patient for periodontal surgery, these are the important principles which you need to keep in mind. Okay, so that is very uh, important when we are uh, deciding that factor. Then uh, the other thing I uh, uh, saw in your presentation was about the different uh, techniques for uh, regeneration. So which uh, flap surgery would you suggest you, you mentioned so many flap surgery techniques, right? Or incision when we are doing a flap. You talked about, uh, you would have heard from your other presenters also. So which incision generally we would give when we are doing a flap surgery? And now we are going ahead, when we are going ahead and uh, placing the uh, placing the GTR membrane. Internal bevel surgery. Uh, internal bevel incision? No, it is generally we would like the maximum bulk of tissue to remain. So many a times we would mostly give the crevicular or the circular incision so that that tissue will hold the membrane in place. Okay, so that membrane in place. Okay, yes. And um, uh, one important thing is you should know that the Periodontal dressing has an advantage also, it has a disadvantage. And there are two schools of thought for everything, just as your coin has got two sides, right? Heads and tails. So even your periodontal dressing, some people say it is a poor excuse for if your suturing is not proper. There are indications where it is very good. Like if you're doing a gingivectomy with the scalpel, such a raw area, you have to cover it up. But if you're doing a flap surgery, and many a times, if you are going to be covering it up, they say sometimes you will be pressing that and you'll press the membrane too and that space is gone. The whole purpose of the membrane is to keep that space so that the periodontal ligament cells will populate there and then we will get some amount of, you know, that's the whole idea of this. Okay, so... You should know about this. Now, which periodontal dressing is most commonly used? No, sir. Sorry, sir. 
uh, it's the eugenol containing or non eugenol sir eugenol uh, containing no it's copac right you find out what is copac copac is the one right which is used you would have seen catalyst base 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 mixing yeah yes sir so you find out in that there are ingredients so you need to see which is the base which is the still <clears throat> rate for the same okay so that's what it was really nice at undergraduate level how you all have presented each presenter had the plus points each presenter also had some negative points and as uh, dr malika has already said all of you all are winners but we want to be someone we have to select to be the ultimate winner right always mm -hmm. so we will deliberate and uh, so i thank all of you all i wish you all the success and uh, i think uh, dr anupam padar sir is doing a fantastic job by giving you this opportunity and this online platform to gain all this different knowledge so it's a very nice uh, thing and i wish you all the best and success thank you thank you sir Hello, Mota. Hello. Yes, sorry, I got disconnected for a while. Apologies. Thank you so much, honorable teachers, for the questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Bennett Fernandez, sir. Now, I would like to introduce. our well wisher of accidental school who, who have just now joined us honorable dr professor asaduzzaman sir principal of sapor dental college and hospital and vice president of bangladesh periodontal society sir welcome to our today's episode so we may now go forward with our next questioning session i would like to request dr wahid zaman sir to please throw your questions to our participants thank you actually uh, uh, a special thanks to dr mollika madam and vinit panandar sir uh, they all are the uh, covered the every point of the session they are not uh, uh leave for me so uh, i want to overlook some point but uh, and want to uh, start first genia genia roy yes sir can you hear me yes sir uh, okay um do you know we are uh, when the patients are come to us there are some problem or many comorbidities present like cvd cardiovascular disease like un un uncontrolled diabetes mellitus so uh, uh, how can you determine the uh, about the, and what is your protocol to maintain your antibiotic prophylaxis or not how can you determine this so the for that we have to take the history of the patient very carefully and uh, we have to ask the patient if the patient has uh been taking some medications for years like if uh, the, there is hypertensive patient then you will be taking anti hypertensive drugs and if the patient uh, has diabetes mellitus then we also would be taking insulin or any other anti diabetic drugs and uh, other are the cardiovascular diseases we can ask no, no, them no no when we are when we are use the prophylactic antibiotic when you are use when prophylactic antibiotic prophylactic antibiotic so yes, antibiotic before, given the people before the surgery, surgery. Give, uh, yes yes yes, yes. we we'll be giving when when who is who is patient for who is patient 
So for heart disease patients. To heart prevent, disease patients. Sorry. Very good. Heart very good. Yes. And um, so, um, fine. Your presentation. Uh, I think this is your first presentation in the yes. in your life in your life or not. Sir, uh, I have been uh, like participating in my uh, inter school or inside the college, but not yeah. in this platform. And uh, I feel very really? chilled and uh, nervous at the same time, but I'm enjoying this. Sir. Not, uh, excellent. Your presentation is a very good, nice, and smooth presenter. You are the really, yes, you're, uh, I think you're good in, in your future. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, I'm a Nepali student and in uh, yeah, Bangla. Yeah. Uh, Bengali uh, environment with the Indian uh, teachers, I am feeling very blessed to be a part of it. Very good, very good. Very good. Uh, can you tell me about the suture material? Which type of suture material we can commonly use in the oral cavity? So generally, last question, for last question, last question for you. Yes, so generally we use silk uh, for the uh, uh, for the payor for the surgeries, oral surgeries. So. As silk, silk, silk is a uh, silk is it is an uh, absorbable or non-absorbable? Non-absorbable. Non-absorbable. And uh, and it is the um, and, and we are we have some non-absorbable uh, we have some absorbable suture surgical sutures we have present absorbable synthetic is the best I think it is best. Uh, and silk is not the good due to it has the, some allergic reaction due to it is the nature it is coming from the natural origin okay silkworm like like silk silkworm so we have used the vitriol vitriol that is the absorbable and synthetic okay yes sir. Yes. yes thank you thank you uh, next 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 is the uh tanjiba norin please yes, sir. Uh, you also find your uh, presentation is also fine and some uh, some uh, there is some uh, uh, technical problem also present uh, the, due to mobile phone this you, you should clarify this so better other than this this is better and i i think some i want to some question for you you ready for this yes uh, do you heard about the peri implantitis peri implantitis what is this the peri implantitis. Sorry. Uh, Trying to easy, easy, easy for you that uh, when the patient is come with, with you with the implant in the area or uh, in the area in the, in the patient in the mouth or jaw huh, with the redness area on the around the implant is called implantitis. The gum also swollen and there is some uh, inflammation of the past and tartar is present. Now, what is your treatment plan? I want to just want to know about the what is your treatment plan about peri implantitis? So I think first we should remove the implant, then uh, then we should take necessary steps to uh, remove the infection or inflammation. Uh, Actually, we, we want to uh, first the, the oral has an instruction maintenance and the scaling, root planning, uh, everything you can do. But uh, implant is removed last option. Okay, fine. This is okay. Uh, or, and, and what type of instrument you use you uh, when you are going to the period periodontal surgery? What type of instrument you can use? So That's only the use... name of the instrument. Uh, then you should only mention the name of the instrument. Um, the knives, uh, sutures, curator, curators, and what are the contraindications? So contraindication, as I said before, uh, bleeding disorder, uh, the patients who are immune suppressive, like diabetic relatives, pregnant mother, lactating mother, uh, for aesthetic purpose. If there is an infection present, you can do surgery? No, sir. If any infection present, first we have to uh, 
recover the infection, then we can do very surgery. Good, very, good. very good. So you, you will answer this question like this way that uh, there are some local contradiction and some systemic contradiction. Okay. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You, sir. Thank you. Wish you all of the best in the next future in life. Take us next. Troy. Troy present here. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, tell me the uh, what what do you mean about the oral hygiene instruction? And how can yes, you uh, how can you uh, tell the tell your patient about oral hygiene instruction? Sir, uh, brushing the tooth twice daily. Mm. Then, uh, sir. Uh, uh, then uh, brushing the tooth twice daily, then uh, with uh, fluoride toothpaste mainly, fluoride containing toothpaste, and then use dental floss, or um, uh, then sir, uh, change the toothbrush uh, every three months, uh, then uh, uh, went uh, to dentist uh, in six months in a uh, day, and uh, then, Use uh, mouthwash, dental floss. Mouthwash, dental floss. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Yes, sir. Question, please, sir. Question, please, sir. Uh, how can, uh, how can you measure the mucosal or sulcus depth? How can you measure the sulcus depth, sulcus depth? How can you measure? Uh, sir, probe, uh, probing by uh, probe. Using name, probe. Please, complete name. Complete the name. Periodontal probe. The, yes, sir. Periodontal probe. Periodontal probe. And which surface you can uh, place it of the tooth? Which surface? Facial, lingual, or mesial, or distal? The question, yes, sir. It's a net problem. Okay. Uh, how, uh, what surface? What surface you can place your pedal probe to measuring the depth? In what surface of the tooth? So, so six mesial, surface. Distal, mesially, six surface, sir. Mesially, uh, uh, Face, sir, uh, mesio facial, uh, the process, distal facial. Is it? No, sir. Oh, mesio oh, 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 or distal lingual. Mesial, distal lingual. Okay, fine. Um, tell me of the bone graft. What do you mean by about bone graft? Bone grafting. When we should done this? Bone grafting. Mm, sir, uh, indication of bone bone yes, yes, bone grafting of indication in periodontal surgery. Bone uh, graft, uh, sir, injury uh, of the bone. Uh, then... Why mucosal depth we are lengthening is done? Why sir, mucosal depth uh, Periodontal uh, when a destruction of the bone. Uh, then uh, sir, percussion involvement of uh, uh, three and four. In paid why mucosal depth is increasing in edentulous patient, edentulous jaw. Why? Edentulous patient. There's no toothpaste in the mouth. Increasing. Why we done this? Uh, sir, uh, uh, gingival recession or uh, gingival recession. There's no tooth, no tooth present. Okay, I think you're not understood this. So fine, okay, no problem. A good, good presenter. Thank you, thank you. Best wishes for you for the next later in life. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Please unmute. Time up, please unmute.
please unmute. Sorry, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Wahid Zaman, sir, for your questions. And I would again like to thank you, the, the other teachers, for your questions and congratulate the participants for your answers. So finally, I would like to go to Dr. Onupam Puddar, sir. Please share your advices and about this program, about this competition. Uh, thank you. Uh, so. uh, first of all, I congratulate all, for all my uh, uh, beloved students, presenters, and for their nice presentation. Three of, uh, three of you go very nice, nicely. I hope uh, our uh, judges, the foreign judges, also Dr. Monica Sethi and Dr. Ganesh Panand will enjoy this program. And uh, it is our uh, undergraduate student, not for the student. Our student is not familiar to this type of uh, surgical procedure, procedure. But I, 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 this is the first time to see the uh, uh, about the surgical procedure. And it, they try to um, uh, answer the question, but uh, I am very happy. Uh, all of uh, judges discuss the um, question and answer. And it will be it will be helpful to our uh, presenter and also our uh, uh, our students and our uh, uh, dentist uh, general dentist who are viewed this program and uh, um, in, uh, after uh, when they show the video it will be helpful to all uh, our type of uh, our students and dentist general dentist and also our faculty. Thank you, uh, Dr. Monica Shadid, Madam, and Dr. Pannan, Janet Pannan, Madam. I hope you, you, you both of you are always with us, and we try to uh, do something about periodontology in Bangladesh. And and uh, and uh, already uh, our um, two institute, BCPS and Bangladesh uh, Shikmati Medical University also declared they uh, want, uh, they try to uh, start a fellowship and uh, position course on, on periodontology. Thank you. That's really uh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, it will be helpful to us. But there is Definitely. no position no in um, course in periodontology. And it is a postodontic, oral medical surgery, and uh, orthodontic, uh, pediatric, but no in periodontology. And uh, our program will help to do, do, do something. Our authority say it is, uh, it is the mother subject of mother subject. It was this, indeed uh, a wonderful is, program. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Please uh, always with uh, us, and you, you, you will always help me. I know you you are best friend of ours, and uh, Dr. Bennett also uh, our friend, and also uh, will help uh, us in future. Definitely. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Move the place. Move on. Thank you so much to the honorable teachers. And I would again like to thank you so much to the honorable teachers who have shared their words of wisdom with us. This was an amazing session indeed. Lots of knowledge from everywhere. So thank you so much again. And I would like to con congratulate Group Michigan today for their presentation. So here our evening ends. I hope all the audience enjoyed today's episode, episode 14, and we look forward to our next episode, episode 15, so signing off from today's program. I am Saima Samin Jahan Muhutto was your moderator you. for this program from Support Dental College and Hospital. Thank you so much. Good evening, my respected teachers. Thank you, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma Namaste. Thank you, thank you once Bennett, again. Namaste. Namaste.